हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम बैक विथ अनादर फ्रीक्वेंटली रिक्वेस्टेड वीडियो सो टूडेज वीडियो इज गोइंग टू बी अबाउट हाउ आई केयर फॉर माई फेलानोपसिस और किड्स एंड मैनेज टू गेट मल्टीपल स्पाइक्स वेल द आंसर इज नॉट दैट सिंपल देर आर मेनी फैक्टर्स दैट कम इन टू प्लेस सम आर अंडर आर कंट्रोल एंड सम आर नॉट एंड देर इज नो शॉर्टकट एटलीस्ट नो शॉर्टकट एज फार एज आई नो so let's begin by knowing how uh, phalaenopsis orchids they when they spike phalaenopsis orchids they need a temperature drop in the winter in order uh, to initiate a spike to be more specific there should be a um, temperature difference of minimum 10 to 15 degrees celsius in the day and night time temperatures for a few weeks in order uh, for the spikes to initiate for us those who live in the tropics that happens during the winters but uh, sometimes there may not be that much a uh, difference during the day and night time temperature during the winters but there is a uniformly uh, lower temperature like around uh, less than 25 uh, degrees celsius for a few weeks then also spikes can appear so the first factor is temperature which as uh, home growers for us it's quite difficult to manipulate we have to rely on the seasons we have to wait till the winter for the spikes to appear whereas in commercial nurseries they have uh, controlled setup for everything they have controlled temperature they have controlled humidity they have controlled light so when their plants mature they subject them to this uh, controlled uh, temperature gap or controlled temperature variation plants over there they receive the best of everything so it's quite natural for them to produce multiple spikes next comes to the varieties certain varieties of phalaenopsis are known to produce multiple spikes and some are not so that also is pretty much not in our hands other than the fact that we can research more about the particular variety that we are uh, going to buy so we can choose a plant which is known to produce uh, multiple spikes at a time now let's discuss what we can do at our level to get multiple spikes and more blooms on our falls phalaenopsis orchids they produce this uh, spikes on the sides of their stem as a rule the fall should have minimum of 3 leaves to produce a spike but there may be exceptions now uh, the older the fall is the more mature it is the more leaves uh, are there on the plant the higher the chances of getting multiple spikes they will have more space from where the spikes can arise they will have more number of leaves so more number of spaces probable spaces from where the spikes can arise so we have to be patient and follow good culture practices to have a healthy mature plant in order to have multiple spikes next comes trimming of previous year spikes some people cut the spikes to the very bottom near to the stem main axis of the plant as soon as the blooms fade in order to conserve energy for the next year's bloom if the plant has a lot of energy this year it will produce more blooms the next year i personally don't do this to all my orchids i uh, wait for the cues that nature provides once the blooms fall if i see the tip is starting to turn yellow then i trim just below the last flower bract that way it promotes secondary spikes if not in the same season then in the coming season this old spike it may branch out and give uh, secondary spikes here in uh, these phalaenopsis i had uh, trimmed the uh, ends of the spikes and they rebloomed along with the fresh uh, spike from this year sometimes after trimming the end of the spikes the yellowing may still progress that means the plant simply has no energy to um, carry on the spike it wants to conserve the energy and it wants to divert that energy uh, for its vegetative growth sometimes what happens the trimmed spikes they stay like this all year long and once the new primary spikes they start uh, to develop in the flowering season those older spikes they simply may start drying out this is the case with this one i left out last year's spike and uh, one uh, two of last year's spike one dried uh, right then 
which i removed and one more it continued uh, till this year and then it started to turn yellow as soon as three primary uh, spikes they started to appear so after that i simply removed the old spike so basically it's personal preference uh, it's personal opinion as in whether you uh, want to cut your phalaenopsis spikes completely uh, or not and uh, uh, it's really doubtful whether that promotes more spikes the coming season it's up to you whether you want to uh, leave them or not and what your plant is telling if your plant is really withered if your plant is shriveled and is looking dehydrated or simply your plant is stressed in other terms then it might be uh, ideal to cut the spike so that the plant focuses uh, more on its uh, overall health so that it gives you better blooms uh, the next season some simply remove the spikes just for aesthetic reasons they don't like the look of bare spikes but i personally don't mind them so i leave them on even if my fall produces a singular spike the coming season i will still have secondary spikes from the older ones again i believe if the plant is weak in itself it will not let the spike to continue the spike will automatically start yellowing and dry out and also in some phalaenopsis if the plant is undergoing uh, any stress of sorts then the nodes will uh, of the spike they may produce kikis so basically i feel cutting a spike is not a factor for more number of spikes the coming year the only thing that matters for multiple spike production is our in you know, which is in our hands is the overall care of the plant and the health and maturity of the plant we have to focus on the roots and the foliage all year round in order to be rewarded with such beautiful blooms uh, annually i have a previous video on how i care for my phalaenopsis orchids however in this video i would like to quickly recap on how i care for my phalaenopsis orchids you can skip it if you have already watched the previous video or if you already have uh, a lot of phalaenopsis and you know how to care for them uh, so basically i give my phalaenopsis very bright light all throughout the day all around the year they stay in my shaded balcony which has northern exposure and receives morning light from the eastern side no direct light hits the phalaenopsis the direct sunlight it hits the um, other higher light requiring uh, plants like my dendrobiums and some cattleyas and vandas in um, very hot months i sometimes uh, bring my phalaenopsis uh, indoors uh, till now uh, i have not felt the need to bring them maybe in may or june i will have to bring them indoors so basically phalaenopsis they are moderate temperature and moderate humidity loving plants they like humidity of around uh, 50 to 60 percent and i live in a tropical uh, uh, climate where the humidity is quite high and the temperatures are also very high already the temperature uh, in uh, april beginning it has touched up to 40 degree uh, celsius so basically i can say that uh, if we care for our phalaenopsis properly if we uh, give them proper summer care then we can grow them even in hot uh, tropical type of uh, climate now uh, it's very much uh, important for the phalaenopsis to place them in a well ventilated spots because they are quite prone to rot if the water is left standing on the crown or in between the leaves so good ventilation around the plants is a must i have both mounted and potted falls uh, mounted uh, phalaenopsis uh, they do better in my climate as uh, uh, the humidity is quite good so i don't have to worry much about um, uh, maintaining uh, uh, their uh, water uh, requirements and also that way uh, there is no stagnation of water and they dry out uh, quickly so um there are uh, the chances of uh, crown rot it uh, reduces uh, a lot and for my potted falls i prefer uh, pots with a lot of uh, ventilation hole either uh, terracotta pot or plastic pot they should have um, ventilation holes and i prefer very airy chunky media that consists of uh, charcoal broken brick or tile pieces and uh, bits of uh, leka and sometimes i top it up uh, with a top layer of uh, sphagnum moss 
for my mounted phalaenopsis i spray water uh, uh, daily almost all year round uh, even uh, sometimes on the very hot summer days i even uh, spray water twice and uh, for my potted phalaenopsis i wa water them uh, every 2 uh, to 3 days and uh, uh, sometimes in very hot se uh, summer season i also may have to water them uh, daily basically i assess whether the media is still wet or not whether they uh, require thorough watering or not a simple method to do so is by sticking your finger inside the media and uh, see if it still feels moist then you can um leave, you uh, need not water it and if it uh, feels dry then uh, you can water it another way is to simply lift the pot and see if the pot feels heavy that means uh, there is still some water inside the media and if the pot feels very light that means the um, the water has uh, dried up I have never had any problem uh, uh, spraying water on my phalaenopsis leaves. Uh, at least my on my uh, mounted phalaenopsis leaves, as the water it dries out quite fast. Uh, for the potted ones, yes, you have to be careful. Um, you can uh, simply water them uh, in your sink by showing them uh, under a, a running tap water, or you can also water them uh, like this, just by pouring water over the media and avoiding any water hitting the crown. and some people they even use uh, double pots or uh, they use uh, soaking method of uh, watering they um, simply by placing the pot inside a larger pot containing water and let the plant or the media soak up or wick up the um, water but uh, if you have a lot of plants then it's uh, practically not possible now coming to fertilizers i feed my phalaenopsis with liquid seaweed extract and epsom salt every 15 to 20 days all year round uh, with slight decrease in frequency uh, along with uh, a slight decrease in frequency of watering during the winters in winters i um, fertilize them once uh, every 4 uh, to 6 weeks like uh, monthly ones like that now uh, seaweed extract it claims to improve the bloom count in flowering plants but i am not sure whether that is the actual cause because many people using npk also they get good results basically we have to feed them regularly phalaenopsis in particular are not very demanding when it comes to fertilizers they can go for a um, year or two without any feed uh, just by getting uh, whatever nutrients they have in their media or from the tap water but for long term we have to feed them well um, especially during the growing season when they are producing new foliage when they are producing new roots we have to feed them regularly phalaenopsis um, more than other orchids as i told earlier are prone to rot because of the water standing on the crown and in between the leaves so if you are spraying or misting them make sure to keep them in a well ventilated space uh, in a well ventilated place so the water it evaporates faster uh, it's not like that you cannot get any water touching the leaves or the crown uh, even if the water hits the uh, leaf uh, then uh, no problem just keep in a well ventilated spot and let the water evaporate red don't let the water stand uh, stagnate on the leaves for too long so that's it friends no shortcuts or tricks to get more blooms it's a year long uh, hard work and patience that pays off make sure your plant is healthy make sure your plant is happy and make sure it's mature enough first and then it will reward you with multiple spikes with very high uh, bloom count year after year so thanks for watching if you like this video then Uh, please hit the like button and if if you haven't subscribed already then please subscribe to my channel for more such videos thanks for watching bye bye